Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media Cardiology Landmark Trials I am Dr Nick Nickum a cardiologist from Houston Texas In this presentation we are going to be talking about the complete STEMI trial The complete STEMI revascularization trial was uh, authored by Dr Samir Mehta and his colleagues it was reported in the New England Journal of Medicine complete revascularization with multi vessel PCI for myocardial infarction in a patient with STEMI the question they posed was in patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction namely STEMI percutaneous coronary intervention of the culprit lesion reduces the risk of cardiovascular death and myocardial infarction does pci of non culprit vessels in the same patient leads to further reduction in the risk of cardiovascular endpoints namely cardiovascular death myocardial infarction heart failure etc they had two primary endpoints number 1 cardiovascular death or mi number 2 cardiovascular death myocardial infarction or ischemia driven revascularization description of the study population this was a multi center prospective randomized study that evaluated the complete revascularization as compared with a strategy of culprit vessel only revascularization in terms of outcomes the study consisted of 4041 patients the study duration was 3 years the mean age was 68 years 19% of them were females and 19% had diabetes when it comes to dealing with stemi patients we have challenges myths and temptations do we fix the culprit artery and get out in the setting of a stemi or do we fix whatever we can in the same setting or during that hospital stay or do you wait and if the patient has symptoms perform perfusion studies or myocardial ischemia studies and base it on the studies as to what the next approach is Let's think of an example. We have a patient with an LAD stemming and we fix the LAD everything goes fine. Now you see a 90% lesion in the mid RCA your oculoc stenotic reflex would automatically say well it's another 15 minute procedure. I can directly stent this patient and we'll be done with it. If everything goes fine that's all right. But the moment you put a guide wire or a balloon you get a no reflow then you try to fix it you put a stent there is no reflow then you try to fix that one and in the end you may end up with three stents and poor outcome things have happened that's why i am bringing up this question and if you look at previous observational studies uh, most of them are based on bias and confounding factors so this study did a randomized control approach to find out does fixing non culprit coronary occlusions improve the overall outcomes in patients presenting with the stemi who already had pci for the culprit artery the inclusion criteria in this study were patients who were who presented with the stemi of course patients who had multi vessel disease with lesions suitable for pci in the non culprit arteries artery with a minimal luminal diameter of greater than 2.5 mm and the lesion was greater than 70% stenotic or had an ffr of 0.8 or less of course the exclusion criteria included patients undergoing planned surgical intervention or those patients who had previous coronary artery bypass surgery 
the protocol the patients underwent routine staged pci of all non culprit lesions this is the treatment group majority of them received everlumus eluding stents cto was attempted only by experienced operators and all these patients were on regular medical therapy including aspirin ticagrelor for one year high intensity statins arbs and beta blockers culprit lesion only pci group received guidelines directed medical treatment now here comes the next statement which kind of uh, raises a red flag for me no further coronary intervention even if ischemia was noted on non invasive studies now you explain to me as a clinical cardiologist standing at the bedside would you do that what is your approach if you have ischemia detected on non invasive studies would you keep these patients on medical treatment for a duration of 3 years so i think that's one of the major questions i have with reference to this particular article they were also on guideline directed medical therapy just as the rest of the group now here are some of the primary and secondary endpoints they had actually two primary endpoints which we talked about uh, let's look at here there were 2016 patients in the complete revascularization group compared to 2025 patients in the culprit artery only pci there was a 3.9% crossover in the complete group to the other side whereas 4.7% crossed over to the complete group from the culprit artery only group the cardiovascular death or mi one of the main co primary endpoints was noted in 7.8% of the people with the complete group and 10.5% in the culprit artery only group with a hazard ratio of 0.74 and a p value of 0.004 so this was statistically significant in favor of a complete coronary revascularization new onset of mi was uh, noted in 5.4% of the people in the complete group versus 7.9% in the culprit artery pci group with a hazard ratio of 0.68 the second co primary endpoint was the cardiovascular death ischemia driven revascularization again it was 8.9% in the complete group and 16.7% with a hazard ratio of 0.51 and a p value of 0.001 significantly favoring complete revascularization in these patients especially if they had ischemia induced changes when they combined all these risk factors like uh, cardiovascular death myocardial infarction ischemia unstable angina heart failure again there was a hazard ratio of 0.53 favoring complete revascularization there was no significant difference in major bleeding or kidney injury now let's look at this data from a graphical point of view and here is a chart showing the first co primary endpoint which we talked about and there was a significant improvement in the complete revascularization group compared with the culprit lesion only pci with a p value of 0.004 and a hazard ratio of 0.74 so there was a 26% improvement in the overall outcome of cardiovascular death and myocardial infarction in the treatment group which included complete revascularization and similarly when they looked at the secondary co primary endpoint of deaths myocardial infarctions ischemia driven interventions there was a even better result as we can see from this curves 
the p value of a 0 0.001 with a hazard ratio of a 0.51 so there is clear evidence from this study that complete revascularization improves the overall outcomes in patients with multivessel disease who present with the STEMI. Most of these uh, revascularizations were accomplished either during the same setting or within the first 45 days uh, of their STEMI. And if you look at the outcomes here, which we already talked about, cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, which was the main primary event, uh, which was a P value of 0 0.004 and the second one we talked about with a P value of 0 0.001. This was 0 0.004 and the rest of the information uh, did not make much difference and again major bleeding and contrast induced nephropathy there was no difference between the two groups. And here are some procedural characteristics for those interventionists. You can pause this and look at these uh, data for a more in-depth look as to how the procedure was uh, performed. Let's move on. Here's a chart showing in every category, in the primary endpoint, the secondary endpoints, irrespective of the age, sex, left main coronary artery disease, diabetes, uh, P2Y12 inhibitor selection, and clip classification of symptoms. In every category, the results were in favor of complete revascularization compared with the culprit only PCI approach. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Complete revascularization resulted in a 26% lower deaths or new myocardial infarction. The reduction in myocardial infarction was a major factor contributing to improved outcomes. There was no major difference in the major bleeding complications or stroke. Staged PCI, I'm sorry, it should be PCI. Staged PCI can be done during the same setting or within the first 45 days of assigning this patient to the study group following the STEMI. One of the major questions I have pertaining to this particular study is the one which I alluded to you in the middle of the presentation as why the patients in the culprit arm only were treated medically when they had evidence of myocardial ischemia by non-invasive studies. If the non-invasive studies showed myocardial ischemia and they were treated medically, what was the necessity for doing a non-invasive study? And if you do non-invasive study and you see reversible myocardial ischemia, you are not following the guideline directed medical therapy for the appropriate choice of treatment. So that's one of my questions as far as this study is concerned. But nonetheless, there was a significant 26% reduction in cardiovascular endpoints in patients treated with complete revascularization when they present with the STEMI as opposed to just treating the culprit artery lesion. Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Nick Nickham and you have been watching the Triple N Media Cardiology Landmark Trials. Please do watch our other landmark trials on our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. Thank you so much.